Hello everyone, welcome back to the vlog. I think it's been about a year, uh, but we're just gonna move on. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life, and I'm feeling good. I think that's a Michael Buble song, uh, so there's that. But it is the first Friday in the season of Lent. If you're not aware, Lent is the season that leads up to Easter. And it's a season in which we uh, do fasting and uh, almsgiving and prayer. <clears throat> but why fast? That's been on my mind the last couple of days, uh, in part because I hate fasting. <laughs> I get all headachy and then I get hangry and then I get crabby and it's a challenge. Uh, but why fasting? And as I was thinking about it this morning and praying and at mass, uh, two, two main reasons for fasting came to my mind. Uh, the first is, I'm not sure if this is true for you, but I'm pretty sure it probably is. Uh, our wills are monsters. Uh, they're selfish and they want what they want, when they want, how they want, etc. Uh, there's a fancy Latin phrase, don't be scared, it's Latin but it's curvatus in se, which means curved in upon yourself. And that's just the way we are. Some of us are more curved in on ourselves than others, uh, but we all have this bent um, to, to be thinking about ourselves, to be viewing the world through the lens of our own ego. And uh, even if we're relatively selfless people, that is still our inclination. Daddy, listen to this. And so Lent is an opportunity for us to stretch that curved nature out, uh, to die to our own preferences, um, yeah, and, and to seek freedom. Uh, there is an analogy that came to me uh, a couple of months ago. I have a, a spinal condition called a hyperkyphosis. Everyone's back is a little bit curved, uh, but mine is hyper curved. And <clears throat> I was working with a physical therapist, shout out to Mark Smith. Uh, and he was teaching me a new stretch that was gonna help take that hyper curvature in my upper back um, and just work against it. And I said, how often do I need to do this stretch? Uh, and he <laughs> looked at me with a big grin and said, every day for the rest of your life. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, but our curvatus in se, our, our dis, dispo, disposition to be curved in on ourselves uh, is the same way. And every day for the rest of our lives, we have to be conscientiously, intentionally working against that. And we can make progress. And Lent is a great season to do that. I was listening to the Poco a Poco podcast, which is Little by Little that the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal over in New York do. It's amazing. I'll put a link in the description. And they were saying, yeah, it's great to pick uh, things that we can give up for Lent. And we ought to do that uh, so that we can be proactively trying to uh, grow in our ability uh, to choose freely. But the best mortifications, the best ways that we can die to ourselves are to willingly receive the mortifications that come to us every single day. Throughout our day that are not of our own choosing. And one example from this week was on Wednesday night, on Ash Wednesday, uh, my wife had uh, an opportunity to go spend the evening with some of her girlfriends. And I was home with the kids and had some plans on what I was gonna do to really dive into my Lenten disciplines, uh, including doing that stretch mark. So, uh, anyways, but God had other things in store for me. And so that night I had to spend almost the entire time she was gone, which was a couple of hours, holding the baby. And every time I tried to set her down, she would just start screaming her head off. And so for two hours, I had to sit, almost two hours, uh, I had to sit in a rocking chair and just rock her. And I had all these other plans for what I was gonna do that evening and they were good plans. They were things that 
We're going to uh, make me healthier physically, mentally, spiritually. Uh, but that wasn't God's will. And so uh, the irony was rich <laughs> that I was reflecting on this sort of mortification, this sort of uh, involuntary dying to my own uh, desires, wants, preferences. And here was this great opportunity to do that. And I'll admit, it was a struggle. Um, it was really difficult. And I had to actively surrender uh, about 50 times. <laughs> uh, but seriously, like every few minutes, that selfish vent would start emerging again in my mind and in my heart. And I'd have to say, Jesus, I trust, I surrender this evening to you. Whatever you have in store, thy will be done. Set me free from myself. And honestly, brothers and sisters, it didn't go all that well. Uh, but it was sobering, and it was uh, a learning experience uh, that I think was really providential that I was able to start my life with that. The second reason that we fast, though, that we offer up these uh, mortifications throughout Lent is to grow in our hunger for the only thing that satisfies. We seek to satisfy the longings of our hearts uh, in all sorts of ways. Some of those things are problematic and they're sinful and we have to uh, beg the Lord mercy to move on from those things. Uh, but a lot of the ways that we try to satisfy the longings of our heart are good. Uh, maybe that's exercise. Maybe that's um, food. Maybe that's uh, relationships. Maybe that's some passion uh, of an area that you're gifted in. That's a good thing. But brothers and sisters, Lent is an opportunity for us to let go of some of those good things and say, Jesus, I want to hunger and thirst for you. I want you to be at the center of my life. There's a, a graphic that we use in my office all the time and around our diocese that I'll put up on the screen. Lent is an opportunity for us to really examine, are there things that are actually moving towards the center of our lives? Does Jesus really and truly have permission to be at the center of our lives? Um, or, or is he part of our life, but not really the Lord? Uh, and so Lent, these mortifications, this fasting, uh, this almsgiving, and certainly this prayer is a, a vitally important opportunity for us to just step back and slow down and say, Jesus, I want to grow in my hunger for you. Help me to, to desire you more. So friends, apologies for the lengthy absence from the vlog. I can't promise there's going to be another one soon, but that was just on my heart to share with you guys today. So hope all is well with you and your families. God bless you. Peace. Okay. Now, what if there was um, a Whining. What if someone was whining? Yeah. What would happen? You would have to go out on the deck. You'd have to go out on the deck. And sit on a huge catapult and be launched into a war. Into a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for today. If you're whining, you have to go out on the deck in a big... In a big what? And a big... Catapult. Catapult. And get launched into a... Hot tub. Hot tub. All right. Let that be a warning to you, you whiners out there. Have a great day.